Welcome everybody. My name is Haresh Singhani. This is Conversations with Haresh. We'll be talking to people of varied backgrounds, covering various topics. I'm very excited to be able to share these with you. The goal is to increase curiosity and empathy amongst all of us to help us grow professionally and personally at all levels. And of course, we also want to make sure that this is fun. So thank you again, and we'll look forward to having you. As, as I was a managing director for, for private equity business, and then, uh, you know, the age comes and then we started our first business in Tokyo, which is around smart home, uh, meaning uh, kind of like nest and smart things. But uh, the big thing is about energy management. So we're one of the largest players in Japan. I stepped down as the CEO two years ago. I'm still the largest shareholder and the chairman. And to build another business, for uh, older adults. And Japan is the, as all of you might know, is the super aged society. It's the only super aged society in the developed world. And uh, we wanted to kind of start with one idea, which is uh, how do you make healthy aging possible? Okay, what that means is if somebody is 50 and is going to be 70 at some point, going from 50 to 70, so the biological age progresses by 20 years. He's playing, he or she is playing tennis at 50. Can he or she be still playing tennis when he's 70? As if he or she was 60, right? So the mobility age is actually slower, going slower than the biological age. And there's so many ways to attack that problem. One is diet, health, you know, all, you know, all kinds of things, exercise and so on. We wanted to do our narrow part, which is, can we look at you? and say, here are the yellow, yellow signs, hopefully not red signs. Can, here are the yellow signs, and uh, please take care of it sooner than later. Uh, let's not make it a big problem. So that's where we kind of started. Now I'm gonna go into the company very quickly. So we do, what we do is we do therapeutic monitoring of older adults, both either in remote or in, uh, in person. Uh, the product, is essentially a mobile app. I can show it to you later, right here, right? And it does, it takes, uh, it can do a lot of clinical tests, about 20 seconds each. And from there, it can predict if you have a dementia, uh, risk of dementia or risk of fall or MSK issues and so on. Um, we don't sell it to individuals. We sell it uh, directly to either senior living, assisted living, independent living and so on, or care providers. Uh, we started uh, collecting our, all our data in Japan. So in Japan, we kind, of, we kind of own the market right now. But US, we're just getting started, right? Uh, it's a large market. Uh, Japan is about a third of the market of US. Uh, when we started building it, right, we, look, we wanted to have the data. Data basically means Ash has these conditions. Ash walks of links. Uh, or choose in a certain way. By the way, those are innate motions. Walking, blinking, and chewing. Using knife and fork is learned, right? So uh, understanding uh, innate motions, and if you build your train models on innate motions, it can go across race, gen not gender, but race and so on, right? But not, uh, Koreans use chopsticks differently from Chinese, from Japanese. Even the mainland Chinese use chopsticks differently from uh, from Hong Kongese, right? Uh, so we built our data, uh, built all our models in, in Japan. Um, it is FDA approved, you know, and uh, uh, this is this is kind of roughly how it works. So you take a twenty second uh, video, and uh, it can predict a bunch of risks about you, and it highlights and alerts the care provider. Um, I'll give you a couple of examples of customers. Um, so this is the lar largest, second largest insurer, but has a large uh, senior living operators and uh, uh, and home care business. So they're kind of using it for to, to identify who is high risk and who is not, and really have the senior living uh, operators focus on the high risk population, right? Uh, this is a large hospital, 
And hospitals, like everywhere else, have a big issue of reducing readmission. Right, right. You don't want any readmission, right? Uh, this is a daycare center, right? This is an unusual company, not, not part of our business model. This is the third largest airbag maker in the world. They decided to move into senior care market. I cannot go more into it because it's their product. We share 10% of the revenue, right? So they're moving for a Japanese company. They're moving aggressively. My guess is the largest airbag maker is probably moving in there too. <laughs> um, just going, so this is kind of how our business model works. So we have a lot of data on the left side. This is traditional AI, okay, supervised model, self-supervised learning. We're getting into the right side. The right side is not our own model. It's because Gen AI is everywhere. The models are there. So essentially what I was talking about is Let's say, let's say the AI watches me and says, Ash has this problem. Ash should be exercising his knee in this way. But the information that AI does, our models do not have currently, do have, but we're not analyzing, is that Ash just came back from a long trip from India. So he has back, lower back pain. So I should be really asking him to do it this way, not standing up. So. The Gen AI models that are out there right now, these are foundational models, not our models. We can feed in the notes from doctors, from therapists, and so on, and it come back and adjust the therapy, right? Uh, so it goes across the spectrum from active to free frail to frail. Just give me go through it. I don't want to bore you with details. So this is this is kind of how it works. Just select a test. You know, set it up and get the score. So this is a this is a very interesting score. Interesting, sorry, interesting test. It's for uh, this is called locomotive syndrome. Uh, it's becoming part of an annual checkup in Japan. Uh, so this test is typically given to uh, active older adults. Okay. You will not give it to a pre-frail. So this is only to check uh, this is a, uh, check balance and uh, strength. This one is what would be typically given to a person who is, uh, again, these are all very established clinical methods. This would be given to somebody who is pre uh, frail. So there's a classic test that says, sitting down, get up from a chair, walk 10 feet, three meters, come back and sit down. If it takes more than 14 seconds, the test has been there for 30 years. It takes you more than 14 seconds, high risk of fall, binary. Less than 14 seconds, you're okay. But now, let's say I did the test, I came back and sat down. I fell down, this is a fact. I fell down coming, climbing, coming down Kilimanjaro. Okay, if you watch, I'm just showing it. I don't have a calf muscle, it's in here. I'm gonna have arthritis at some point, for sure. If you walk carefully, my, lower, my left leg is actually shorter than my right leg, right? So my cadence is different. So although I'm, totally fine with this 14 seconds, models can very quickly understand I am compensating everything else because my left leg is shorter and there are some yellow signals, right? Yellow signals about many things. It could be as bad as my hip balance and my shoulder balance are screwed up and there my, I might have scoliosis, right? All those things were not able to, uh, without AI, was not able to, it was hard to capture. Now you have evidence-based capturing, and then you can measure the progress over time, right? So, uh, and there are many more tests, and uh, I'm not gonna bore you with details. I think I've gone way beyond my time limit. So I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions now, or you can ask me any, any more questions later. After a couple of glasses of wine, I, I answer better. <laughs>